Hello everyone and welcome to a special project in sandbox mode in Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. And as you see here we have a Falcon 9 rocket and this was a project that I worked on on a live stream on Sunday but it didn't go so well there but I have proceeded and made some refinements so hopefully it'll work here. Um, ignore the Falcon Heavy decoupler there, it uh, makes no difference, it should just be the normal second stage decoupler. But anyway, uh, the idea was to turn the second stage of the Falcon 9 into a space plane. Unfortunately, that does give this unfortunate hump because the size of the Mark II parts don't quite match with the size of the second stage. Uh, so it's wider but not quite as tall as we would like. But the idea is to, of course, bring back the second stage. Now, there are a few ways of bringing it back. You could just have a huge heat shield, but it would kill the payload capacity of the second stage anyway. Um, obviously, in terms of just getting crew into orbit, the Dragon 2 capsule is much better. Uh, but there is a huge caveat in that you lose the second stage. So this allows you to get six crew members to orbit and also bring back the second stage. So there's that. Also, it's a smoother ride. So if your passengers happen to be dignitaries or, you know, corporate leaders who are engaged in mining operations on asteroids or the moon and uh, want to catch a ride to a space station around Earth and then transfer over to the moon or their asteroid base, then, uh, well, there's a better way to go because less G-forces on the way down. Uh, on the way up, we'll have to use throttling to manage G-forces, but we can do that. All the engines involve throttle. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's sort of a 2001 sort of idea and probably ahead of its time. In fact, it is ahead of its time because as far as the Delta V is concerned, it's pretty constrained as long as we're using kerosene and oxygen. So the engines are not changed, by the way, but there are a lot of differences to the way things are set up here. Uh, the Merlin 1D vacuum had to be offset down just a little bit to match the center of mass of the rest of the vehicle. Also on the tail, we have two, uh, actually four Super Dracos, sorry, uh, two sets of two. And the tank for that is here. So we have MMH and N204 here, 18% uh, utilization. And you can see the stats for this vehicle. Now here's an interesting fact. If this gets refueled in orbit, it's got 6,682 meters per second of delta V, which is easily enough to head to the moon and come back, and to quite a few things and come back safely. Uh, it could also transfer to Mars, but then probably would, we would have to abandon this as a crew container and just carry two people, and then instead use this area for food, water, and oxygen, and living space. Even then, it wouldn't be very comfortable. But on the bright side, on at Mars, it could use its wing surface to slow down, so it wouldn't have to do a powered aero capture. Uh, and also with the Delta V, it could probably go get there pretty fast. Um, I've had to add a little bit more heat shielding to the Falcon 9 upper stage fuel tank, because otherwise it doesn't have enough. So let's take a look. We will assume it's had so, uh, it's it's already a little bit heavier than it probably ought to be in any case. Let's see, uh, Falcon. So, um, no, I think this is the work in progress one. Yeah, that one. So, uh, 2,400 skin, 1,250 internal is the upper stage fuel tank. It should be protected by the wing, but sometimes it doesn't seem to be. I'm talking about on re-entry. The wing is, of course, um, space plane procedural wing. And I think that just about does it for this. I have uh, done landing tests with it. Uh, thanks to the Super Dracos, as long as I keep this unfueled, we could uh, test out its flight characteristics. It's got the wheels and all. So I did test its flight, and it works fine. That doesn't mean that it can re-enter perfectly. We've got to see about that. And that's really down to the RCS configuration and that sort of thing. Okay, well, we'll fuel this back up again. It has to come down with the this tank empty. It can't be carrying kerosene and oxygen in there. Otherwise, it should be fine. So, other than that, the first stage of the Falcon 9 is unchanged. There is no particular difference. 
Uh, this is a very heavy payload obviously and we're going to try and keep fuel in the first stage to prevent uh, to ensure that it can return to launch site. So we're going to shut down the engine early and preserve some fuel which means that this is a too heavy payload for just the first and second stage to make orbit and we will need to use some of the uh, Super Draco fuel that we've added, the MMHN204, to actually complete orbit. So that's part of the plan. Uh, you will note that it's tilted a little bit and that's more or less because I couldn't get it quite straight. Um, it'll be fine. It'll be fine on launch. Now, you're not going to like this, but in order to ensure that this can handle the fact that the aerodynamics are bad, right? The center of lift, lift is all the, way, all the way up here, whereas the center of mass is down here. In order to deal with that, we're going to have to launch straight up for quite a while. In fact, pretty much straight up until we pass max Q. Otherwise, the thing will flip. Uh, not the safest system. If, uh, if we wanted to put fins down here, it would ruin the ability of this to return. Uh, there are other possibilities, but, but we'll go with this for now. Now, as far, as far as our tight Delta V situation is concerned, that could be substantially improved if we use a methane oxygen engine, like a small Raptor engine, on this second stage instead of the kerosene oxygen engine we're using right now. Also, if we could use some methane oxygen thrusters in place of the Super Dracos, that would be good too. So there are possibilities for improvement, but for now we'll take this as sort of a the minimal adaptation on the Falcon 9 rocket. And of course if we were going to use methane oxygen engines, we could probably also use sort of a different tank up here and make it all look a little bit more seamless instead of having this hump. But right now I just wanted to take the Falcon 9 and modify it directly, and that's what I did. Okay, well let's see how this works. Now I should emphasize that I haven't tested everything yet. It's not like a perf perfected design. That wouldn't be any fun. There is still the possibility for mayhem, so don't worry. Uh, this could all explode at any time. I'm not entirely sure. I just fixed the obvious problems that we had during the live stream, which was that the second stage engine needed to be shifted down, and so did the Super Dracos, so that they go through the center of mass properly and otherwise we're still at the mercy of some uncertainty here. Alright, so on that note, ignition. And launch. Let's try and straighten it up here. Smart ASS is not very happy about this rocket but we can get its help to keep it straight up and down for now. The gravity losses are going to be immense, so just we're, we're going to take that for granted here. On the bright side, since it doesn't get too far out, it probably won't have as hard a time getting back to the launch site. So there is that plus side. Elon Musk is not in favor of shuttles. I don't think he would ever do this willingly, though I guess if he got substantial funding for this kind of system, who knows. But yeah, I mean, there are obvious flaws with this. And the first one is what you're seeing here, going straight up like this. You can see some of the wiggles as it goes through Max-Q here. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got it, I got it. Okay, and as we get to three G's, I'll throttle down. So we have throttle down, and then uh, we will shut down the engines with 15 seconds to spare, which should be enough fuel reserve to get the first stage back home. So that's how much I'm reserving. 15 seconds of full throttle burn time. So you can see the stage time there is full throttle, not our current throttle. And 
there we go. Set. And ignition. Oh, RCS, RCS, RCS. Uh, got a little bit of a sideways kick there. Initially on separation, it's a little bit hard to handle, so... We are using RCS quite a lot. The engine is placed so that it matches the center mass uh, a little bit into the burn rather than at the start. Gonna see if Smart ASS could potentially hold this better than I can. I doubt it, but. Uh, uh, I don't want to use too much of the RCS fuel which is also the Super Draco fuel, which we need to complete orbit. Okay, we seem to have settled down at 20 degrees. we got a long burn ahead of us. As far as the life support situation right now, we aren't carrying very much life support. We will try and bring it back down, assuming we make orbit. But that depends on exactly what kind of orbit we end up with. Well, for now, we're looking good. Well, it's still using the RCS, though. That's never great, but obviously that's its only choice to hold it steady. The engine gimbling doesn't seem to work very well here. I'm pretty sure the Merlin should be able to gimbal more than it does here. Doesn't look like it's making much of an effort. I checked it does gimbal, but it's just not doing as much as I would like it to do. I suppose it'd be fair to have it do a roll right now to straighten itself up. You can see barely a wing on here, but it can take off from a runway given high enough velocities, but we did do that. We did take off normally with it using the Super Dracos. The Super Dracos have a minute of fuel, by the way, at full thrust, but they can throttle down. It looks like we're barely going to make orbit like this. Especially if it keeps using the RCS fuel, we're not in the best sort of situation. Again, I think this will work better if we had a methane oxygen engine. Okay, um, Super Dracos, but we'll throw down for them. Got a caps lock. It's wiggling around quite a lot. Okay, maybe not. Uh, <sighs> Just have to put up with it. Oh boy. Um, let me let me try not having smart ASS do this. Now one of the difficulties is that. Uh, the um, Super Dracos use a different mix of MMH and N204 than the RCS thrusters. So there's some inefficiency there. Okay, I think given the situation, I'm going to just keep it to a periapsis that allow us to re-enter. We could make orbit, and then we could deorbit. actually. We have enough fuel to deorbit. The problem is actually that on the way down we wouldn't have any in any RCS co to control it. So if I want RCS to control it on the way down, I'd better stop it here and we'll just do a re-entry test. So margins are tight. If the structure of the cockpit and this and the uh, clampatron were a little bit lighter, it'd be a lot better. Oh, so maybe we could lighten the wing up. Uh, we'll try going for this periapsis. It has served me well before.
but we're not aiming for anything in particular. We're just going to come down where we come down. Uh, actually, in my experience, Smart ASS uh, tends to wiggle it a lot, so maybe I should just do this manually with the SAS, of course. But yeah, I, I get a lot of roll oscillation with Smart ASS. It doesn't like the way I've placed the RCS thrusters, I think. It's not the sleekest looking shuttle ever, especially with the hump. But I guess the question is, does it work? At least, can we survive to a splashdown kind of thing? Right now, we are coming down. And where are we? We are over Madagascar. So we're going to aim to splash down in the Indian Ocean. Unfortunately, it seems to be in the dark. There is an unfortunate gap between the wings, which is why I thought it prudent to add heat shielding to the fuel tank. Don't know how that'll work out. We are still wiggling back and forth a bit. It's just not as bad as with Smart ASS. Control surfaces are uh, are ready. Uh, the outboard ones have pitch and roll. The inboard just pitch. And then of course the rudders have yaw. I might consider giving more pitch authority to these guys. Uh, I'll let it be 30 degrees. You can see on the rudders we've bent them up so that they clear those flaps. Let's see if the air brakes do any good here. I doubt it. Eventually, uh, the drag on them will end up causing problems for our ability to maintain pitch. At that point, we'll have to retract them anyway. But at that point, uh, they would be most effective. So this is sort of an alternative to something like a Dream Chaser. Uh, my Moon Chaser was mounted on a Falcon 9, and it was a smaller vessel. It actually had enough uh, Delta V if it was fully fueled to get to the moon, but Falcon 9 couldn't launch it fully fueled. Um, of course, it can't launch this fuel fully fueled either. It uh, depletes most of its delta v trying to make well, really all of its delta v trying to make orbit. But this, if fueled in orbit, could get uh, would have even more fuel margins than Moon Chaser. Moon Chaser only had enough to fly by the moon and come straight back. It wouldn't have been able to make orbit around the moon. So this is a much better sort of situation. And of course, the Merlin 1D has multiple ignitions. Kerosene and oxygen, not exactly the worst as far as boil off, though there is the matter of the super cooled oxygen. I don't know if that causes any problems for refueling in orbit and also for boil off. That uh, I assume it has problems on boil off. So we might be uh, overestimating how much delta V we could get out of this upper fuel tank. But we can solve that by switching to methane and oxygen, which would be a more efficient mix anyway. Though I have to caution, not by a whole lot, because the ISP on the Merlin 1D vacuum is 347, which is rather high. Uh, even the Raptor vacuum engine uh, gets uh, 381, which is, you know, better, but it's not earth shattering. We are slowing down, but worryingly, the cockpit is glowing red. Uh, if there's any part that you don't want to see glowing red, it would be the cockpit. <laughs> but uh, here we are. I, f I, I didn't really check the heat shielding on the Mark II parts. I probably should have. I have not successfully brought this back down before, so I don't know what's going to happen right, right here. I'm using a very standard uh, shuttle return profile. I used a standard, at least for me, return periapsis. But just going 40 degrees above the horizon. The docking port is also overheating, which is, well, I guess it is poking out on the side. I was about to say, which is interesting because these things should be protecting it, but nope, it's poking out the side of it. Sorry that this is in the dark now, but I guess we could add me light adjust this up. 
As far as slowing down is concerned, we're doing a pretty good job at this point in the atmosphere. It looks like our vertical speed is approaching zero, which will be helpful. We're not using too much MMHN in 204. There appears to be a persistent need to roll and yaw to the left, if you take a look at our indicators there. I'm not too sure why that is. It suggests some asymmetry, but of course everything was attached with, with symmetry, so it's a bit peculiar. We're at 85 kilometers and our surface velocity is under 7,000 meters per second. This is reasonable. Uh, suddenly we're using a lot of RCS. I don't know what just caused this sudden burst of RCS use. Um, uh, we are suddenly having trouble with control. Just it was looking quite all right and then very very suddenly at 82 kilometers we we started having issues I'll, I'm manually trying to balance this out again uh, it seems to want to pitch up mm, and roll in bad directions uh, oh yes the brakes um, let's take off the brakes and uh, because I'm worried that their drag might be doing some of this. Um, nope. Uh, I'm having a bit of trouble here. It's like aerodynamics suddenly decided to kick in there. Let me see. Uh, surface. 40 execute. Uh, okay, well, let's see if it can do this. We are now at 74 kilometers, 5,600 meters per second. As far as slowing down is concerned, well, we were doing a great job, but right now the vehicle is having issues. And I wouldn't say Smart ASS is helping. Uh, let me try and take it back. Good thing I put the heat shielding on that second stage tank, otherwise this would be much. I mean, it would have exploded by now. I'll try and keep it together as best I can. It might be a lack of roll authority because we don't really have anything outboard. But the RCS should have been able to deal with this. We uh, test flew it in basically this current situation, I mean, uh, with the fuel as it is. Uh, so our center mass and center lift should not have changed since then. Uh, this is rather serious. Mm -hmm. uh, don't mention g-forces in the comments please I mean obviously we're having bad g-forces <laughs> uh, we do have uh, deadly re-entry right I thought so if it wants to kill the Kerbals it should be able to do the g-force thing so far we haven't gone that far I guess we are running out of uh, MMHN into a 440 RCS so eventually that's gonna be a problem we need to get below 2000 meters per second before we're really through the heat possibility of the heat issues with this and we have you know the thick part of the atmosphere is still coming No, we're definitely slowing down. And 
and you know I mean if you're gonna tell me that maybe I should be able to shift some fuel forward I would agree with you it seems to want to pitch up in particular thirty meters per second left I'm gonna take the RCS off it's not like it's really helping that much right now and I'd rather reserve whatever I can for emergencies note that I did that once we were close to 2000 meter per second mark I'm gonna try and keep it to prograde but um, the g-forces are becoming an issue let's go locked view this might make you a little bit dizzy but there, there we are now we've settled on prograde finally gripping some of the good air in this part of the atmosphere aerodynamically it's okay I swear uh, okay but uh, seems like we're getting some heating here okay let's pull up a bit we're at Mach 3 right now. There's 60,000 feet for those more used to those numbers. So it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I just want to maintain our velocity. I can hardly see anything else. Mach 2. We'll have to be very careful about how we pull up here. Now during the flight tests I tried to splash down twice. Neither was particularly successful on the whole keeping the whole thing intact bit though the crew survived both times. Again, sorry you can't see anything, but it's not making it any easier for me. Yeah, it seemed like we went below the... the stall speed. I'm... I'm not entirely sure this is uh, completely unglitched right now. Anyway, so that's the idea. I've named it the Talon because I wanted a part of a Falcon rather than the entire, you know, and the new bird, like, you know, n not a Draco, not a Falcon, not some other bird. It's not the, the entirety of the rocket, it's just part of a rocket, so I named it Talon. And uh, clearly we still have some work to do. So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.